Hey there, didn't see you there. Welcome to EcoWest. My name is Daniel Kim and today we are in my room. Today I want to talk about one of my favorite nanofish, the Celestial Pearl Danio, Celestistus margaritatus. Coming right up. So, oh, this is where all the magic happens. And today I want to talk about these guys right over here. The Celestial Pearl Danios. So when we talk about the Celestial Pearl Danio, let's break it down a bit. Celestitis, 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 and it's divided into two parts, Celestis and Ixis. And Celestixis means heavenly, while Ixis means fish. And then you have the species part, Margaritatis. It means adorned with pearls. And once you get a zoom in on these fish, you'll exactly see why. You'll see exactly why. These guys are the perfect fish for a nano aquarium. So for some background, these guys were found in Myanmar in 2006 near the Hopong village. While they are discovered in 2006, right now they are an extremely popular fish in the aquarium hobby. But in the past, people were worried about these being overfished. After 6 months of its release to the public, rumors spread that these fish were dwindling in numbers and this filled hobbyists to start breeding them. But lucky us, turns out they're amazing breeders. I haven't bred these guys personally myself, but I've heard that they're really easy to breed. These guys breed pretty frequently. They average around 30 eggs per breeding session and they breed year round. So after the pools in the wild had small population from over collecting, the Celestial Pearl Daniel Fry reinvigorated the population after only a year or two. Turns out, these guys were everywhere. But man oh man, their breeding behavior is super fun to watch. If you look at this current video, you see that the males or the females circle around each other, sizing each other up. These fish establish territories and small aquariums too. But these fish, honestly, they're really shy. As you can see, I heavily plant my aquarium because they just don't like having those big open spaces. In here, I have a lot of pearlweed, hair grass, beast plants, and some floating plants. The more plants, the better for these guys. They're very hardy fish actually, and they can survive really tough conditions. But of course, you should make sure to do proper cleaning schedules and take care of your pets. They're your responsibilities. You know, these guys aren't really super common in pet stores, but I mean, you can find them anywhere. You can buy them online too. They're everywhere. So I recommend that if you're in the market for some nano fish, these guys might be the ones you want to get. I usually feed these guys bloodworms or maybe small crumbled pieces of fish food. That's because their mouths are really small, so you might want to be careful about how big the particles are that you feed them. Also, these guys are really well known to go well in shrimp tanks. The tanks I'm referring to are the ones right over here. I'll make a video about these shrimp in the future, but for now, know that these guys do really well in shrimp tanks. But you might have to be careful about them trying to nab the small um, individual baby. Probably going to try eating one of those juveniles. But if you have a lot of plants, some mosses, a lot of hiding spaces, usually you can see a lot of shrimp growing up and just um, being able to survive into adulthood. But yeah, I think that's it for this episode. If you guys liked what you saw today, please like and comment. Do you guys like large aquariums, small aquariums? What kind of aquariums do you guys like? And do you think you might get Celestial Pearl Danios in the future? You know, I have a lot of big hikes coming up soon. And so we're going to get back on track with those outdoor camping videos. I'm really excited to produce those and you know, it's time to get back into nature. But for now, it's your turn to get out there into nature. Have a good one guys. Peace.